Good morning. Welcome to Terra at Home. I'm here with uh, my pal Jillian Love from the LCBO. Nice to have you nice on to see again. You, Leslie. And I always say when you're around, it feels like we're having a party, right? It is. Because it's always, always a party when it's alcohol. <laughs> always. <laughs> and you bring wonderful ideas for us all the time. So right now, we want to hang on to summer with every ounce of our being that we have, yes. right? So even though we are edging towards September, you have some ideas of mixing beer. Beer cocktail. Kind of like a beer cocktail. It's really idea. interesting because there's the different beers out there, Leslie, there's so many flavor profiles. Yes. And when people don't drink, like a lot of people don't drink wine and mm -hmm. or you know, they they'll have a cocktail but they're not big drinkers. Mm -hmm. It's nice to dilute the spirits with beer mm -hmm. and just give it that nice punch of flavor. So mm -hmm. I've come up with a good transition into fall. Okay. So we're still in summer, but okay. when we when we get into the next few weeks it's gonna get a little cooler. Yes. So we've started to introduce some beer cocktails that are really, really nice and okay. and, and lovely to have. The first uh, thing I made is just a very simple beer sangria, hmm. and it's made with a Belgian lambic raspberry uh, flavored beer. Oh, and wow. all you do is you add a couple of ounces of tequila, a couple of ounces of Grand Marnier for mm -hmm. the orange, that sort of citrus, right, yes. and a full bottle of the lambic beer. A raspberry and then I've garnished I've got some fresh raspberries you can freeze the raspberries ahead of time add frozen raspberries That's a nice idea. for a nice mm -hmm. cool drink and some diced peaches and peaches were really in season that right sounds now, like it'd so. be pretty powerful yeah it's quite strong <laughs> and you know what, if it's, but it's, it is only still beer it's a, a little right. bit of um, you get a little bit of spirit as well sure. just to give it that punch but I love yeah. tequila though so that would be that's yeah. kind of a nice base to yeah add to and, that, and so. the tequila gives it that sort of uh, lemon lime sort mm -hmm. of aroma so and, and sangria is fun because you can add different types yeah, of Yeah, and you can keep it in the fridge. Yeah. You can, you it's know, good. it'll, and then you can top with, if it's the too strong, you can always top with ginger ale or soda right, water. Right, that's what I was wondering. Because that's what I'll often I do with my sangria is I make mm -hmm. red and a white when mm -hmm. people come over and it's, yeah. it's fun because you are making, when you make them in a pitcher like that, then you are giving people an option to just kind of yep. put it and out there. And they can help and themselves or, you know, <clears throat> have, yes. have some fun with it. Mm -hmm. um, the next drink I want to make is the apple bite. Okay. And it's made with Mad Tom Indian Pale Ale, mm -hmm. which is a craft beer from Muskoka. Um, we're going to really, it's very simple. I've got a, a martini glass or cocktail glass. I've added some fresh lemon juice. Mm -hmm. I'm going to add an ounce and a half of the sour apple. So people it gives love nice these apple-based drinks. A lot of people just find them very no, refreshing. Yeah, right? very, very n nice tart drink. Nice acidity right. to it. Right. So this and isn't going to be sweet. No, no because we're going to sweeten it with those sweet, sweet, sweet. Yeah, <laughs> we're going to sweeten it with a little apple juice, though. So okay. you've got the That's tart good, of the of the sour apple and then the apple juice to balance. Yes. And a little bit of ginger ale. Mm -hmm just for some effervescence. And then of course, we're gonna add the beer. So you're gonna to top with the beer. Hmm. And honestly, garnish with a nice uh, Granny Smith apple and you've got a delicious transitioning drink from summer to fall. Mm -hmm. Very so nice. So it's a really refreshing. Now, are you are you guys noticing at the LCBO, just uh, beer sales have to be up because of all of the variations They're through of through the roof. Now? And I you know, honestly, um, we have some fantastic craft beers, unique beers, mm -hmm. flavored beers, and I'm finding that the consumer now, Leslie's getting way more educated. They're, yes. they're very, very informed mm -hmm. and they know what they want. So there's a, a, a portfolio of beer for everybody out there. It really seems like I'm, I'm not a beer drinker myself, but I have found that I'm sort of, you know, delving in different flavors because of, as you say, yeah. the, the stronger profiles. Right. I mean, a beer that has a raspberry, you know, I know forward I flavor know. to it, you can pretty more much people are going to go there. Yeah, yeah. you can do anything yeah. with it. And I like the idea, again, as we are saying, you know, you try to introduce it a little bit if you want by doing the cocktail idea, yeah. right? Some people just don't like that beer flavor, but now... Even if you don't like beer, mm -hmm. there's something out there sure. that you will like because there's so many flavors. Well, some of them are so light. Some are, you know, some people don't like that hoppy flavor and that's kind of yeah. where and you want to go. And there's wheat beers and yes. there's what, like the Weiss beers, the German beers, there's, you know, porters, mm -hmm. stouts, mm -hmm. there's... Um, and like like this is just like a wine almost. It's Pretty a raspberry much, right? framboise. I like yeah. the Rattlers right now too. I like that grapefruit. The Waterloo grapefruit yeah. Rattler is yeah. like water. It's just a perfect beer for very refreshing. It, and you've that's got that I nice find. grapefruit note mm -hmm. to it too. Okay, so let's so try we're another one. So moving on. Mm -hmm. So this uh, next cocktail is made with the Nickelbrook Green Apple. And this is on fire right now. Is it's it? a green okay. apple beer and it really put them on the map. Uh, Burlington Company. Yeah, so, these guys have been doing yeah. really well. And we, we've added ginger, uh, ginger liqueur. So mm. our 
I've got a half an ounce of the Domaine de Canton ginger mm -hmm. liqueur, which mm -hmm. is really nice and spicy mm -hmm. and it gives a nice kick. You healthy. can even smell healthy. it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> ginger is good for your blood, didn't it's you know? It certainly is. It'll balance. Then I've got um, an ounce and a half of brandy. Okay. So this is a nice fall drink too. Yeah. And then we're going to open. It'll warm your heart. <laughs> Ooh. I shook it before. Yeah. I, was I was trying to see it, what so would happen. So then we're just going to top. <laughs> with oh you're good the nickel brook green you're apple good. i was trying to throw you off this is called the canadian pie oh that's what i named it anyway but it's a uh, it's lovely and you garnish with a, a little apple and it's again two completely different flavor mm -hmm. profiles and great with a nice slice of apple pie or mm -hmm. some cheese or just sifting on its own you know what i'm thinking especially these ones right now but i mean all of them really you know we're you know, six weeks out from Thanksgiving, but a lot of times on Thanksgiving, as we know, we can get some beautiful weather. People can still sit out yes. on the patio. I know we do that with our relatives. These would be fantastic yes. things to serve. They yeah. kind of have that feel to them. Yeah, great Indian summer, just for yeah. sitting out and yeah. sipping and exactly. enjoying. Yeah. And the last one is really mm -hmm. fun. Mm -hmm. It's uh, called a banana split, and it is made with a banana beer, a banana Come flavored banana bread beer, which That's is so cool. Crazy. This is great. It's a great dessert beer. So okay. if you're having it with uh, chocolate or any kind of dessert, yes, it would be lovely. So okay. it's just half and half. It. So you're gonna pour really? half of the Wells banana bread beer. Here you go for it. All right. I want you to reach across pour me. Half. Mm -hmm. And you get that nice smell of banana. And this is that dark chocolate one. I was saying that I remember reading about a recipe that you guys had where you made a float. With yeah, this. you can put ice cream in ice that. Ice cream with this. You can. And you can have Adult that. Version. That is so versatile. You can have it with stews and you can also have it with chocolate, like with a dessert wow. and something sweet. So it can go either way. Wow. So and we're just <clears> going to pour half of the chocolate stout. And then you've got chocolate and <clears throat> banana, which is a classic yeah. match. Uh, Garnish with, you can actually rim a glass with some melted chocolate. You can add a chocolate That's skewer, um, sure. a banana with a cherry, anything like that as a garnish. I love it's it. all about presentation. And I haven't fun. seen the banana one though. That's pretty cool. <laughs> as you say, there's something for everybody. There's a lot of monkeys out there. I know. You know what? I, I can't imagine, big, honestly, how you guys decide what beers to bring the, to into the store because there are a lot of microbreweries going on, some really yeah, neat stuff. There's so many and they're so passionate about what they do yeah. and um, being local, supporting local, local mm -hmm. grains, you know, local barley. All the, um, the flavors are local and mm -hmm. it's so nice to see. Well, I know that you always put out really great recipe ideas and of course food that complements a lot of these cocktails. So love mm -hmm. your food and drink uh, magazine as well. Yeah, right? food and drink. Is there's just so many great ideas. So you have to experiment. Recipes. Yes, and there, there's a drink for everybody mm -hmm. out there. Um, and if you are having a party mm -hmm. this fall coming up, just make sure that you have you know non-alcoholic drinks for your guests too yes. that aren't driving. That's I know very you guys important. like to make sure that people are wise on that front as well. So. Yes. Thanks, Julian. Good Thanks, stuff. Stephanie. Can't wait to try these. That's it for now. More Tara at home to come. Live color fully at Terra, where color lives. Heritage Perennials, look for us in the blue pots.
Good morning. Welcome back to Terror at Home. We're back with Dave Machulis from National Landscape Group, and uh, we're in a beautiful backyard right now showing off uh, the things that you can do. Yeah. <laughs> Working within restrictions and certain parameters, uh, and sometimes that's what we have to, we have to really think about that, and a lot of people don't think about that, so you get to think about it for them, right? That's right. So yeah. they say, okay, Dave, I have this beautiful backyard. I want you to do this over here and this over there and whatever, whatever, and then all of a sudden there are bylaws and all kinds of stuff. Well, you know what I've, I've come to learn is doing things by the book goes so much more smoothly, but yes. there's always uh, the permits and the applications and, mm -hmm. you know, you got to look at uh, covering all the angles. Right. And sometimes we come across some real challenges, like when conservation land needs to be preserved, and mm -hmm. I'm a big tree hugger myself, yeah. and we're working within confined spaces, we have to work around being creative mm -hmm. and developing spaces like a cabana here that doesn't require a permit. We were actually able to come up with a footprint size that was under 108 square feet. Mm -hmm. So City Hamilton loves their bylaw to be conform that if you <laughs> go over that, you gotta get a permit. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this particular instance, we came up with something that was just, just small enough, but mm -hmm. has all the functions that our client needed to have a poolside bar. Wow, because originally they wanted to have something that was more in the backyard, like way pushed in the backyard, but again, we're backing into conservation, so had to pull it up this way. That's right. So you had to, again, work within what you're left with. That's right. But still make it look awesome, and I actually think this is fantastic, because it yeah. faces right towards the pool. Yeah. Um, you've got the kitchen on the other side. You've managed to find seating and arrangement all the way around, and this looks incredible and it's still yeah. a great size yeah yeah right? well and you know what in this particular instance we were listening to our clients need you know mm -hmm. they love to have the friends over they love to have a keg you know <laughs> on tap all the time <laughs> who is this guy I want to come to their party <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so you know what what we were able to do is mm -hmm. give them everything he needed in a small confined space but give it that little touch of class right and a contemporary feel because mm -hmm. um, that's what the clients really that's right. their style is mm -hmm. they, they like that clean line look. The clean line look and, I, and actually it's beautiful structure yeah. so you're dealing with wood and stone together yeah. so there's something still very natural about that but it is it's still it's, it's got more of a modern look to it. Yeah well so, we have to also respect some of the cost factors but true. you know you're looking at what looks like real stone yes but it's actually a cultured stone you know you, you put a cool. rock board backing and glue it on and it looks wow. like a million bucks. It really does it's amazing yeah. how far we've come with that yeah. you know we've, we've talked about in previous segments how a lot of times people have thought over the years there's no way I would ever be able to afford something like this. This is mm -hmm. only for the super rich, mm -hmm. but it's totally attainable now because of the materials that are out there. Yeah. So this, for example, you're not dealing with real stone and that real buildup of a foundation. This is totally... Yeah, steel frame construction for right. the bar. Okay. So it's all like a modular, you put it together like Meccano. It's yeah. really great technology. You make it sound so easy. <laughs> and then uh, the rock board goes on it and you glue on the stone. But one thing that we try to keep consistent, mm -hmm. and it's like that finishing touch of uh, authenticity, mm -hmm. is the real granite countertop. Beautiful. So connection between the other countertop in the yard to this one here. Right. It's, uh, it has that continuity. Mm -hmm. So what's right when so in the built-in kitchen area, um, again, you've got that same counter and that's just, it's beautiful. You're right, that really adds and takes it to the next level, right? That's yeah. a big piece of granite going across here, so it's gorgeous. Yeah. And uh, just, the, I obviously have to think about the seating and how many people are going to be here. Mm -hmm. He's having people come over behind the bar. That's going to uh, maybe put it, maybe be a TV someday? Yeah, yeah, actually it's slated for that <laughs> and then uh, in the short term until mm -hmm. the steel roll down doors get installed to lock everything down to protect it all. Ah. Uh, we have a bit more of an open concept, casual look and uh, you yeah. can look at yourself to make sure you still look good after the fourth beer. See, oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> you don't even know what day it is at that point, right? But yeah. So you're going to be putting in steel doors that roll down through here that will protect yeah. so it, he can create again like a total lockdown. Yeah. Like yeah. put so that you can hold and you don't have to take anything out of here at night. Well, you know what? You got to stock things in into the bar mm -hmm. and you have electronic equipment, yeah. you know, eventually when they want to put on the sound system and mm -hmm. so everything needs to be protected. And, you know, we do. Uh, I, I myself have teenagers and uh, you want to make sure that things are locked down yes. tight when you go away for <laughs> a long weekend. So that yeah. everything has been thought through mm -hmm. so that. He basically can stock everything up in uh, end of April, beginning of May, mm -hmm. um, and keep it all outside right up until the end of October or middle wow. October when he wants to shut down the backyard. And I know that you like to extend the life of uh, your outdoor living space, and by yeah. creating something like this, you are, you know, we come out here, as you say, in the fall, and mm -hmm. uh, 
you know, m even into, into the deeper falls, you say, well, you maybe you closed your pool down at that point, mm -hmm. but, uh, or you might not be swimming in it, but you can be sitting out here having a drink and watching the football game up on the screen, yeah. have people over for Thanksgiving, and spend some time outdoors. Well, actually, we've also planned in with uh, other structures to put those uh, heaters, the infrared reflective heaters, so you could actually sit out here, still have the heat come down on you, but those are other accessory oh, items. Like up that in you here? Yeah, ah. up in the post and beam. So we use beam uh, architecture to hide things. So the beams that you see installed in this unit will help right. hide the roll down doors. Right, if okay. you want to put up within the ceiling the reflective in infrared heaters, mm -hmm. you could actually be sitting out here watching the game on TV. It could be middle of October and you'll be co cozy and toasty right. warm. And yeah. again, that is extending the life of your outdoor living space. So you're investing into this. Mm -hmm. it, it's obviously going to help with the resale of your home in the end as well because people yeah. love love walking into a piece of property onto a piece of property that's been landscaped already yeah. that's a biggie for people because it it's a lot of work right yeah. and and it can be costly depending on what you're looking for mm -hmm. so you know people love to be like hey that's already done bonus right yeah. versus walking into a you know just plain old grass in the backyard so yeah. this is uh, this really adds to the value of a home it does yeah. now you must love the the latest and greatest in materials and all the technologies you say with the heaters because you can really help please a client that way mm -hmm. um, you know especially if they're dealing with certain parameters certain things that they may have dreamt about yeah. that you can't give them because of bylaws yeah right so if you wanted to have this huge contraption way back there but now you've pulled it up here you still managed to make them happy exactly yeah so this has been freshly done so they haven't had a chance to really party it up in here yet have they well I think they're gonna have a big party this weekend <laughs> so <laughs> I would and you know what you know what the kicker with this one is the ice maker we actually had uh, found an ice maker that Come you can on. install outside okay there. I was gonna ask you what was behind the bar there so yeah. there's an ice maker back there's there. an ice maker back there we've got the keg back there and <laughs> a little bit larger prep sink for all the drinks that are to be made so wow. yeah yeah so they have everything they need that they actually don't have to go inside during the event or a party mm -hmm. that they have because it's all tucked into this Best. tiny little footprint space mm -hmm. uh, tastefully done and that's the best part is, uh, again, as we'd mentioned in previous segments as well, is this, you know, talking about sometimes you don't know what you need mm -hmm. until you're outside and you're like, oh, I wish I had this, mm -hmm. right? That's what your job is, right? So that you can think for them. You know, it'd be a fantastic to have an ice maker out here because yeah. if you're going to be having people over, the last thing you want to be doing is running back and forth inside the house to get ice. That's right. Or whatever. You can store everything in here. And by the way, he's uh, doing all of these, like, lockdown doors and everything. Yeah. This is going to be... It's yeah. gonna be awesome. It will be. You must have so much fun coming and doing these I things. I do. That's one thing I love doing the most is mm -hmm. outdoor entertaining and, and for parties. Right. Yeah. And so I actually like getting invited to them as well. Well, I was <laughs> gonna say, you know, we, you, you keep bringing us to all these wonderful places, Dave. And you know, it, I always say when I see places like this, I'm like, I want to go to a party there. Yeah. Would this not be a great place to have a party? Yes. <laughs> yes, it would be. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Your your backyard must look like this, though, doesn't it? Ah, uh, you know what they say is the uh, cobbler's kids yeah. have no shoes. See. <laughs> See, that always happens. You don't yeah. have time for your own place. Yeah. Oh, well, you can come to my place <laughs> and do my place. All right. I don't have a backyard like this. All right, that's it for now. We'll have more terror to come after this. <laughs> Live color fully at Terra, where color lives. You've sat under them and built forts in them. You've swung from them and fell out of them. You've even fallen in love under them. Trees have always held a special place in our hearts and memories. A natural beauty, trees will grow with you and your family and bring color and nature into your world. For your assurance of quality, look for trees and shrubs with the Medallion Plant Tag. Medallion Plants, locally grown, the pride of Niagara. Good morning, welcome back to Terra at Home. I'm here with Chef Mark from La Piazza Allegra restaurant in Hamilton. And 
We are in late summer right now. Yes. We want to use all that's abundant to us from that's our right. gardens. And so you have a great kind of simple idea for us today. Yeah, this is really, really simple. But I think what you're going to find is as the summer goes on, especially the way we've had a great summer this year, mm -hmm. um, you're looking at lots of zucchini, lots of tomatoes. So I figured, you know, we'll do something that you can use as an appetizer or even as an entree if you want. Mm -hmm. It's basically what it is. is it's almost uh, a zucchini parmesan, okay. but it, it's a gluten-free. So instead of having a breading and stuff like that, mm -hmm. All we're going to do is we're going to take our zucchini, we're going to uh, flavor it up, we're going to add some aroma tomatoes to it, some Asiago cheese, we're going to bake it in the oven. Very good. Okay, and that's the thing, right, right now, we have a lot of this. A lot so of it. you need to use it, right? <laughs> you I know you're going to waste that's your right. neighbors and, uh, and you're making your sauces, that's you have right. aroma tomatoes coming out the wazoo, but uh, this is a great idea for it. And as you say, it's, it's, it's light, it's healthy. It is. And uh, it's just another way to use all these wonderful vegetables so yeah okay. because you do you do start running out of ideas I mean there's only so many things you can do with uh, mm -hmm. zucchini and tomatoes so That's true. yeah so what we're gonna do I brought two kinds I got a yellow and the green zucchini okay and we'll do uh, do a couple strips of each so we're gonna try to cut it as evenly as possible so what I did here is I just took the end one off now I'll hang on to that and we'll use it for something else okay all together okay um, but these are the ones that you know, you want to cut them as evenly as possible. That way, when you put them in the oven, they cook as as evenly as possible as well. So a fairly good thickness there on them, though, right? Nothing too thin. Yeah, you don't want it too thin um, okay. because you know zucchini does have a lot of water in it and stuff right. like that. So if it's you cut it too thin, apart. it's just going to get mushy on you. Okay. And the other thing you have to be concerned about when you're cooking this dish is how long you cook it for. Um, a lot of time, people the biggest mistake they make with zucchini is they overcook it, and the longer you cook zucchini, the more bitter it becomes. So really? if you've ever had zucchini in a, in a dish that has been sautéed or something like that and it gets really soft, you'll uh, find that the dish gets really bitter. I've never noticed that. Um, so, and that's why. It's just overcooked. So this is going to be done in the oven on a broil. Okay. For something that's so mild in flavor, it's kind of interesting that it would go bitter on you like it that. It does, yeah. Okay, it, good tip. Uh, you got to watch it because, again, it is the one thing that, you know, people say, uh, the dish was kind of bitter and they don't realize what it is. Oh, wow. And if you don't have spinach in there, which is normally known to go bitter, right. um, zucchini would be the other thing. Exactly. Okay. All right. Okay. Good to know. So there's a, a few pieces of each mm -hmm. and we have a little bit of oil and you can use any oil you want. This one here is a canola oil. Okay. And I'm just going to mix that around. It's nice having the, the colors yeah. variation too. It looks good. Yeah, people eat with their eyes, right? Yep, so sure do. We're gonna add a little bit of salt. Okay. Touch of black pepper. And then what we have here is a baking sheet lined with parchment paper. Mm -hmm. And we're just gonna lay them out. There we go. I love all these just quick and easy dishes. These are just uh, very, fun to very have simple. In your arsenal. <laughs> you know, you don't want to be doing this in the middle, um, spending a lot of time in the kitchen no. in the middle of summer. So right. you know, make it nice and simple. I mean, there are very complicated dishes that you can do with uh, different vegetables and stuff like that. Save that for the winter time when you have the extra time. Exactly, you're kind of stuck indoors. You're stuck indoors anyway. You yeah. know, take the time, grab a glass of wine, and mm -hmm. away you go. Exactly. This one here, nice and quick. I really don't want to talk about the winter. That's just, it frightens me. I feel like our winters are too long. It just, it's, it's scary knowing it's already, you know, the end of, almost kind of the end of summer, really, because we know once We're we get to there. Labor Day, it uh, it's sort of just is the unofficial end of summer for us. So. Yeah. Let's stay positive. <laughs> That's right. All right. So you like the Roma tomatoes for this? I like Roma tomatoes pretty much for for most of my dishes. There's mm -hmm. very few times that I'll use a beefsteak tomato. Okay. Um, you know, the, the hothouse ones are good in the, in the, uh, the wintertime as well or mm -hmm. in the late fall. But uh, mm -hmm. for the most part, I do like Romas. I just find that the walls on them tend to be a little bit thinner. Okay. Um, so when you have a thinner wall, you just don't, you don't have that um, acidity that comes along with oh, the outside. All right. So. And, when they're, and they're small and they're just firm too, right? Yeah. Just, you're, you're not risking it all falling apart on you, it seems. That's right need a nice good sharp knife especially at this time of the year you know as the tomatoes start to come into season and stuff like that they're yes. gonna they're gonna get really soft on you they're gonna ripen up <laughs> really well yeah so make sure that you take your knife run it over the steel very quickly mm -hmm. that, That's, way uh, that is definitely one thing you do not want to cut a tomato with a dull knife it's no. just it is a mess it's a disaster 
And if you don't have, if you don't have a good sharp knife, mm -hmm. go to the serrated one. I, I, you know what? Ever since we talked about that on <laughs> yeah, our yeah. past show, I've been doing that actually. I just find it so much easier now. It is. It's very handy, especially if you're at, you're at the cottage, you're camping, and you only have so many limited tools. You're, you're limited. Yeah. Go with that direction. All right. Now we're gonna separate that just slightly. Now we have our box grater, and what I brought along is some Asiago cheese. Doesn't really matter what cheese Asiago, you use. Okay. I like Asiago. Uh, it's got a little bit of sharpness to it, but it melts really well. And we're just gonna... Oh, right, yeah, because Parmesan doesn't really. So. Uh, no, it'll crumble up and yes. it'll, it'll brown for you, um, right. but you don't get that, you know, that stringiness that you'll get with an Asiago. Oh, right. okay. And mozzarella, to me, is a little bit too mild, so I want something that has a little bit more flavor, flavor for it. Asiago's good for that, for sure. Yeah, so we're just going to give that a quick grate. And then we're going to take a little bit more salt for the tomatoes. Now, could you add eggplant to this whole deal? Because I if feel you, like I could. You know, could. if you add eggplant, yeah. you, basically you have a ratatouille. Ratatouille, okay. That's right. Um, so you could add eggplant. Now, the thing with the eggplant, same thing. You've got to be careful on how thick you cut it, okay? okay. Yes. Because um, it has a fair amount of moisture as well, mm -hmm. okay? So everything that you have on here does have a, a good amount of moisture. So you do got to watch how thick it is. So you're putting a fair amount of cheese on there. That's awesome. This, sounds, this looks really good. <laughs> I like like I said, nice and simple. And what I've done here is I purposely left out all herbs. Now you could add oh, herbs, yeah. you can add, I mean, oregano goes very well with tomatoes mm -hmm. and would go very well with this dish as well. And if you add the eggplant, you add your oregano sure. or thyme, something like that, you're, right. you have a ratatouille essentially. Okay. <laughs> um, but with this one, what I'm looking for is just to get those flavors of the vegetables itself and the sharpness of the cheese. And awesome. that's it. Okay, so we're putting this in the oven for how long? Uh, until the cheese browns up. Let's put it. Yeah, starts to brown up. You'll start seeing this all brown up, and then Very you're good, good to go. Won't okay. take, on broil, won't take long. All right, magic of television. We'll be right back in a couple of minutes, and it'll be all done. We'll see you in a few. Live color fully at Terra, where color lives. I am a truth seeker. A storyteller. A dedicated volunteer. I am a caring neighbor. A customer's best friend. And a client advocate. I am a survivor. A social media junkie. A proud father of four and problem solver. I am the Hamilton Spectator. I am the Hamilton Spectator. I am the Hamilton Spectator. I am. 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 We are the Hamilton Spectator. Good morning. Welcome back to Terra at Home. We're back with Chef Mark right now, and it is smelling amazing in our kitchen just because of something so straightforward and simple. Straightforward and simple, yeah. So we just put it in the oven. Now, what I did there is I put it on the bottom shelf first, okay, okay, and then I moved it up to the upper rack uh, in the on the broil setting, and okay. that just helped crisp it up a little bit, soften up the zucchini a little mm -hmm. bit. But you can see the zucchini still firm. Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah, you can see that it. it as we were mentioning earlier, you don't want to overcook that and get it all mushy and That's bitter. right, yeah, exactly. So. It's amazing what melting cheese can do, right? Because all you, as you said, you didn't add any herbs to this. Nope. It was just uh, some canola oil, or any oil you want to use, and salt yep. and pepper. And salt and pepper, that's wow. it. And we're using the cheese as the flavoring, mm -hmm. and then I'm just gonna, now what I did here is I made sure that I put it yellow green on the tray, just so I remember to do the same thing on the plate. But. Oh, that's true, right? <laughs> it makes it a little easier for you. That's great. But I, you know, I can see this just making this self, myself for dinner. <laughs> I love it. Maybe add a little protein to it, but uh, yeah. what a nice addition. Something just different again and using um, all of your wonderful vegetables that we have local to us or in our own gardens. It's so nice to go to the markets right now too and just pick up all the stuff that we crave and the real flavors that we crave in the winter time. That's that right. We can buy in the stores, but just don't taste. It's the not same. the same. It's yeah. not the same. You know, this is this is when everything is local. This is when mm -hmm. it's growing. This is when the tomatoes are fresh and mm -hmm. not too firm, not too too soft. Mm -hmm. They're I, perfect dish, 
perfect time of the year to do it. Now, with the Remo tomatoes, uh, you at home making a whole bunch of sauce right now? Yes. I yes. Bet. Yeah. yeah. Sitting in the garage on top of the bucket, you know, old I school way. Because I think that you know, if you change that up, there's <laughs> it's yeah, I know. not the it's, same. It, it is. It's just this classic way that you guys do, yeah, that's and I just right. it sounds so fun. I want to be invited to the party sometime. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Again, always just great uh, summer ideas for for cooking and spending more time with our friends and family and less time in the kitchen. So very good. Thank you. Thanks. Have yourself a great weekend. We'll see you next time.